Writing thrillers isn't easy. I've been working on a thriller series, the Charlie Davis thrillers, which follows a gang of high school kids who are basically solving supernatural mysteries. The characters are down to earth, the situation they're in is dire, lives are being threatened, it's fantastic. But there is one problem that I tend to struggle with and I feel a lot of other writers do as well, especially beginner writers learning about concepts such as pacing. Pacing is something I've discussed many times before, but I feel that in the thriller genre, it is more important than it is in fantasy or science fiction. Because typically, fantasy and science fiction don't have to employ a sense of suspense. In other genres, you have characters who are facing off against antagonists, which are fairly common. Your supervillains, your dark lords, your monsters. But in thrillers, you have to deal with ingenious psychopaths or a more down to earth and gripping monster that lurks in the darkness, or even an unseen threat that is hiding in plain sight. For example, a character which is playing the good guy but is really the antagonist. This is probably another reason why a thriller works so well with mystery stories than other genres do. But back to the topic at hand, which is pacing. Pacing is something that's important in thrillers because you want to keep the suspense alive. The moment a thriller loses all sense of fear and mystery, you're no longer scared of what's in the dark. You know what's there. So to put that simply, we need to get the pacing right in our thriller stories more than we need to get it right in other books, which have many other elements that can captivate the reader. But we screw up the pacing in a thriller, we lose the suspense. So the first thing I believe one should do is set the pace. To set the pacing in your story, you need to adjust the way that you write and set the scene in order to make sure there is a sense of time. For example, the slower scenes will have more descriptions, because the characters themselves aren't moving around too fast. They're spending their time in the moment discussing something important, going over some finer details. So it's slower. There's more time to discuss these details, but also to take in what's around them and notice more subtle cues in mannerisms. And in order to take it to the next level, to speed up the pace in those high intensity scenes, where a lot is going on. For example, a protagonist encountering the antagonist, a chase scene, or perhaps a, a shocking scene where something incredibly terrifying has been discovered. We need to convey a sense of urgency, a sense of danger. And the way we do that is we use short, punchy sentences, perhaps cliffhangers, if we've introduced something scary near the end of the chapter. So we need to get our readers excited, we need to get their heart beating a little bit faster. And the subtle way of just simply changing our sentence structure helps do that. Because even mentally, shorter sentences tend to have the effect of faster pacing. Next is your subject matter, which is the shocking scene that is developed, the chase scene, the action that's going by so fast. There's little time to convey details, and that's another important point. You can immediately slow down the pace of a scene if you detract from it with some paragraph of details describing what's ahead of them or the room that they're in, because there isn't time. If they're in danger, they're only looking for what's important, which is an important clue or an exit that they can use to escape whatever danger they're in. So yeah, these techniques help you in those moments, but now we also need to look at the bigger picture, the plot structure as a whole. Most of our story will have slower scenes, but we need to of course include those high intensity moments to keep the interest there, to suddenly develop the plot in the right direction. So those are your conflict scenes, the inciting incidents, uh, small encounters in the second act, and in between those moments it's the characters collecting themselves, discussing the aftermath, taking steps forward in order to ensure their safety, 
or to pursue the antagonist, whatever the plot may be. Sometimes we take it a bit too far, we spend too long on the slow scenes because we either enjoy the characters or the world space that much, and we want to develop it a bit more. But if that takes too long, without anything interesting happening, or the plot moving forward in some way that's compelling, we start to lose reader interest. So the question then is, how do we keep suspense going, even in those slow moments, so that way when the high intensity scenes do occur, the readers themselves are ready for them, they're not bored out of their minds by the time that interesting thing happens. And that comes down to the stakes of your story. The stakes being that your characters could be in danger, something is threatening them, or there are stages in the novel where the threat itself is increasing all around them, and soon they will be in immediate danger themselves. It's the most basic way to establish high stakes in your story, is to put your protagonist in a dangerous situation, or at least people close to the antagonist in a dangerous situation. That's why most crime thrillers or those espionage thrillers have characters going up against bad guys and putting themselves in danger for someone else or for something else. We need to introduce a threat and make sure its presence remains even in those quiet moments. And that doesn't mean putting it right in front of the reader all the time. It simply means that the thought of it, the danger of it still exists. It's an uncertainty of what's going to happen next, even in those quiet moments. And sure, it won't be as impactful as it is in those high intensity scenes, but at least it is still present. And the suspense, of course, is still alive. However, if you take a look at your tone, this often means employing more darker imagery or a sense of dread almost all the time, and the tone of your story can heavily detract from the characters, because these characters are constantly on edge, and that's something you need to be careful of. The reason this is, is because your characters themselves are feeling the suspense. Your goal is to make the reader feel the suspense, not the characters. The characters themselves need to be caught off guard by danger at some points, so that means they need to have moments where they take a breath, collect themselves, perhaps have some light-hearted moments, before they get back down to business. The reason you do this is because if you don't, you keep these characters in a state of suspense, they won't be as surprised as they would be in moments where they feel they are safe, and they also come off as two-dimensional. Characters which are constantly miserable or angry on edge tend to lose a lot of depth because that seems to be the only range they have uh, when it comes to their emotions. However, in those light-hearted moments or in those slow scenes, they have an opportunity to show some personality beyond that. And that's what makes them so compelling. They are down-to-earth and realistic because they aren't always in such a state of I'm the main character, I must feel this way all the time. Very robotic, very uninteresting. And that's something that I had to learn very early on before I tackled the thriller genre. I had written hundreds of short stories, many of them being thriller stories, but I often found myself creating characters which, yes, may have a tragic backstory, or they may be going through dark times, which is the cliche that is often used with thrillers, but they lacked the moment where they showed the qualities of their personality, and as a result, it felt like writing the same character over and over again. So yes, the tone and the slow scenes definitely matter. Including a light-hearted scene or two helps to alleviate that tension, and that makes the tension returning all the more dramatic. And when I felt that I was ready to tackle that with a thriller novel, it didn't mean I was... A master at it. It meant that I felt more confident about it, so I could write it comfortably. I still have to take a look at my writing every now and then, go through it and check the pacing, because sometimes I get carried away in those slow moments or those high intensity scenes. But of course those are just my thoughts on writing thrillers and pacing them. And I find myself enjoying these characters because they are so amusing to me at times, because I feel that these are characters that have more depth and variety in personality, and this genre and these characters click with me a lot more. And I believe that's how it is for most creative types. 
We are trying to get better at something by overcoming our unconscious bad habits to develop conscious good habits and hopefully one day these good habits become unconscious and we can write with more fluidity and ease than we would in our beginning stages of our writing career. It's always good to practice and develop these skills and habits. There's always space to learn more. So if you have any thoughts on this and would like to share them with me, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for listening to my thoughts on this. And if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. With that, good day, good night, and happy writing.